Hey guys, well, it's been, this would probably be, you know, a little over halfway through my 60 days of videos. I decided to do 60 videos in 60 days. I'm a madman. But part of that was I'm doing those videos and everything is being done on my Dell G15 laptop with Linux installed. So everything that I'm doing is within Linux. And I wanted to do this for a couple of reasons, but mainly to get really comfortable with the system. You work in a system regularly, you get comfortable with it. You learn things, you grow in it, and you start to figure out what you like and what you don't like. So it's almost like a long-term review situation of Linux as a whole, because not only am I working on a distribution, Endeavor OS, that's my actual daily driver that I use all the time, but also I am using virtual machines and checking out distributions regularly, looking at a desktop environments, install processes, who is that distribution designed for, and getting a sense of Linux as a whole. And it's, it's really been a cool ride but I'm a little over halfway. I wanna just kind of share what I've experienced, what I like so far, and what maybe some of my challenges are as well. Here is my desktop right now. I am still using KDE, although I am moving slowly closer and closer to either LXQT or XFCE for no other reason other than I just like them. They're pretty mid to lightweight desktop environments and maybe I'll switch, maybe I won't. KDE has been great for me, I can make it feel uh, Mac-like in my workflow, or I could make it feel Windows in its workflow, and that's not an issue. Uh, I've been in an Arch-based system this whole time. I will wake up, come in, and see a notification with anywhere from two to 50 plus packages that have to be updated every day. <laughs> and then, you know, I like that, and I also don't like that. So I'm trying to decide, do I like it? Do I not? I've been able to get into some open source programs like GIMP. I love GIMP. Um, I also like Ardour. I'm looking forward to finding a way to showcase Ardour for you to see in a top level kind of situation if you are into audio production and see if it might work for you. So far, my feel is, is that it's really great. Am I as comfortable in it like I was in Logic Pro? No, I'm still figuring stuff out. I'm realizing this really quick. What I loved most about my situation before was some of these little extra pieces. So in Final Cut and in Logic Pro, what I loved more than the workflow was all of these plugins that were available to me. Things that made my, my work life and saved me time, you know, just make things easier that I loved. And a lot of those aren't available and I'm having to learn how to work within that. For instance, scrubbing audio and making it sound nice and clean is quite easy with some of the plugins that I had in my Logic Pro sessions. Scrubbing the same thing in Linux without those is just been a challenge and a growth and learning curve for me as you're listening to me now on my $25 USB microphone, it's not the greatest audio and that's okay. But a part of me is trying to maximize this and make this as, you know, sounding as good as I can. Some of you may not like the way I talk. Some of you may not like the way I look, you know, but those kinds of things are things I don't have control over. But what I can do is try to make me sound the best I can and look the best I can. Got a $70 camera. It's as good as it can get, guys. <laughs> and at some point, I will be able to use some of those more professional tools when I get there. As far as in the system, as far as what I'm using, what's going on, I've had zero issues with Endeavor OS. It's been quite pleasant to use it. I've got NVIDIA drivers that I have to use. That has worked well. I, I am able to play games. I am able to render video. Things are being displayed properly. I'm not having issues with fonts. I'm not having issues with quirkiness that I expected or that I experienced when my first go around with Linux 15 years ago. Things feel solid and secure. Now, I'm still in between using some proprietary software and open source software. And I, you know, for me personally, I think that's fine. You may feel differently and that's okay. You may feel differently about that and that is okay. You know, I've got Spotify here. I've been able to run Zoom calls from here. I've been able to get email. I've been, I mean, email. You're excited about being able to use email. I know. I have had very little issues with this. Now, what I'm realizing more and more as I'm going through and learning 
Linux is that distributions, because of their focus of who they're trying to reach in their philosophy, uh, doesn't always match uh, for a person, one person to the next. Uh, you know, I've had a couple of comments from people who they would like to try Endeavor OS, but for one reason or another, their wireless card doesn't work. I guess that that's because their wireless card requires a proprietary driver, and that's not um, up front with Endeavor OS. I don't know. Maybe someone can help to find that in the comments. Even then, something that I really like is not going to work for them. Even between uh, Debian-based distros or Ubuntu-based distros, things, for some reason, one thing or another is is not lining up. You'd think this Debian-based distro should feel this way or work this way. And then there's some little tweaks and, you know, they have their reasons. I did a review yesterday on MX Linux, a walkthrough of it. It felt very different than Debian 11 stable, just the bullseye install. And I think that's, you know, a good thing that we can reach different groups of people. But I can see already that People trying to get a sense of Linux, I'm already getting the, you know, what should I start with? What should I use? Why are you using this? And it's really actually a hard question to answer because it seems to be, you know, a chemistry experience between the distribution, the hardware, and your goals. So it's very hard to answer that question. And I think that's hurting the Linux community in one sense or another. On the flip side, you get so much choice and so many things that work well for different people. One of the things that I thought I would use more is workspaces. I haven't used workspaces one bit. I thought I would. So far in my daily workflow, I, I don't. I have two monitors set up. I use both monitors. So what I need on one monitor is here, what I need on the other one's here. So I haven't been using workspaces as much as I thought I would. That's one thing to note. I have used on my vert manager, my virtual machine manager, I have down here a Windows 10 virtual machine. You know how often I've used it? <laughs> I haven't used it once. I got it installed, I got it ready to go, and I expected that there would be something that I needed that I might need to grab a Windows environment for me to, to use. Now, that's not to say that would be your case. For instance, you may really be dependent upon certain things like Adobe Photoshop, some other Windows specific things. I know that there's been some things with some financial software that works on some versions of Wine and some versions they don't. And that's okay. You know, that's that's totally fine. If that's your thing, if that's your jam, you know, it's fine. Some people are like, don't use the Windows. You know, I get it. I'm not a fan. You know, being realistic, if you've been using QuickBooks for 20 years, you're in the ecosystem. You have books that you use. It's practically speaking, you need to be able to use that program. Sure, I'm, you know, there's other budget financial software available in the open source community, but that may not be where you're at. I think practically using a system is something that we need to be real about. I've got DaVinci Resolve, proprietary software. Spotify, proprietary software. But I've also got GIMP. Open source, Blender, open source. Gaming has been a pleasant surprise. You know, halfway through, you know, my I feel like the videos that I'm producing with the limited resources that I have right now are getting better. I'm also getting more comfortable and understanding more about Linux. And I'm just, all my mistakes are out there for you guys. And you have been very kind to me when you need to point out where I've been mistaken or need to improve. I appreciate that. We aren't going to grow unless we can learn to work through some things together. And I hope that through this time, through me learning Linux, that you glean from some of this, that you gain some knowledge and understanding, that you get a sense and a feel for what you're trying to achieve. You know, that's a big thing for me personally in this journey is not just so that I can have this great laptop and I can do some pretty fun, cool things with the Linux operating system. It's way more than that to me. This is a philosophical shift in my mind. This is opening up resources. It's being tapped into a community. It's getting a sense and feel of something that's bigger than myself. And that may sound a little pie in the sky, you know, maybe it is. This Linux journey has been so much fun. We'll see how I feel five years into it. It is such an honor to get comments from people who have been doing this since the 90s and people who also have 
you know, they're taking the first look at Linux. A big part of this channel is not only walking through the journey and seeing where someone new and how they grow into it, it's also to hopefully connect people. This was, you know, a little bit of a rambling, but I hoped you grasped a couple of things. So far, Linux is cool. I'm able to work in it full time. And I believe when I get some better resources like a better camera, a better microphone, some of those pieces, I think that my production pieces are gonna be even better. I'm not going to be limited by those things. I'm gonna maximize what I have and be grateful for what I got. Don't misunderstand me. Software options, being able to work through problems, Forums are great. The Endeavor OS forum is great. The Arch Wiki has been very beneficial. Going through and using different distributions is teaching me a lot. And I feel like I'm getting a sense and an understanding of computing in this day and age on specifically Linux. I hope you, you know, get something from that. I hope you connect with us when we get to the 60 days, 60 videos to 60 days. That'll be the 60th episode. That'll mean in 60 days I will have done 60 videos, guys. I'll walk through with you kind of my process. You know, essentially, I'm still holding a full-time job. I've got two to three hours in a day to record and edit a video. That's it. I've got family, I've got my job, and that's what I've got. So I'm doing the best I can with what the, with what resources I have. And Linux is helping me achieve that. And the more time and resources that I have, hopefully the more resources I can provide for you. Halfway through my, oh, well, I guess it's a little more than halfway through my 60 videos in 60 days. I feel pretty good. You guys are some pretty cool people. You've been very kind. The other day I was looking at Endless OS and it's the Endless OS Foundation. I did a walkthrough of the operating system. Long story short, they're about making sure every person, whether they have internet connection or not, can have access to learning. And they use Linux and they use some pre-installed software education pieces. And I just thought that was super cool and super amazing. And they had a Blender tutorial. I have Blender sitting here ready for me to learn. I haven't started yet, but you know what? There are tools and people ready and av available for me to learn a new skill set. And that's what I'm hoping to do. And I hope that's what you're learning to do as well. Whether you've been in Linux for 20 plus years or you have been in Linux for two days, there are resources for us to learn. And I, I really want to bring that up because halfway through this thing, any challenge that I've had, I've been able to find an answer to. Now, that doesn't mean that you aren't gonna have those problems, uh, whether you're dealing with monitor support or you know some quirk that's happening in your system. I don't know, it's not, you know, not everything is working perfectly for everyone. And you know, I get that. And I think everyone who's on Linux understands that too. But man, this thing is cool, guys. I like Linux. I really like it. Hopefully in about, I guess it'll be 24, 25 days, I'll do the 60 videos in 60 days video. And I'll show you a little more on the backside of what I've been experiencing, what I've been going through. This was a little more of a where I'm at, how I'm feeling during this, because after that 60 days video, I'm gonna be moving forward. I'm gonna be moving forward in this process. Maybe in the next 20 something days, you know, Linux just fails on me. I start having a lot of problems. I don't know, and I may need to walk away, but I'm not getting that sense now. I'm still definitely in a honeymoon phase with it. All of my mistakes are there for you <laughs> to learn from too. All of my triumphs um, in using Linux is there for you to learn from as well. But a goal of this channel is to allow for all of us to learn something and to encourage each other along in this journey because I can't see it any other way. When you are in Windows, it's not a journey, you're stuck. It's like getting something handed to you and you just have to work with it, whatever they give you. Mac, it's a different toy that they give you, but it looks good. There's nothing wrong with either of those operating systems. I'm not bashing those, but with Linux, there is definitely some growth involved. There is a life in and of itself that you start to experience. You become personally connected to the operating system, and I can't say that I felt that with Mac or Windows. I'm gonna continue to use the terminology journey because that's the only way I can see this, and I'm becoming more and more personally connected to this operating system. And I hope you're getting connected as well. Thanks for listening to me ramble today. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. You know the deal. Like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. I keep that stuff to a minimum, but I do want to remind you once in a while. Thanks for checking it out. I'll see you tomorrow.